Welcome everyone. Today I have a special progression guide for Zenless Zone Zero. Now looking behind me, we're back to our Excel for the data and also information to the level to the next level. If you come over to the game, you can see I'm currently level 39 and I'm about to get to level 40 very soon. So this video, the first part, will focus on how to get to level 40, how to get to level 45 very fast in the game without spending any money. And I have prepared a variety of written guides and also notes for you guys to have a look at this part. We'll also go through the ways of beating different paywalls in the game that is psychologically designed to make you spend more money. And it's very important for those existing veteran gacha players to understand this. And also for those of you, this is your first gacha game, it's even more important to understanding those paywalls and avoid getting into the trap of paying too much money into a gacha game. So coming over to the first part of the guide. Now, if you guys haven't seen this overwhelmingly good Excel, and if you haven't seen our previous video, I really recommend going through that video to understand how to use this Excel. So right now, you see my account as a live example. When I made the Excel guide, I was around level 34, and this is the start of the week. And I had around, I think, 1,000 experience into level 34, and my plan was to see how long it will take me to get to level 40 and if I can make it on the first week. Actually, I think I was around level 35, right? Yeah, maybe I was around level 35 with about 4,000 experience. And so what I'm trying to show you guys is you can adjust the numbers and also things accordingly that is in red. For more details, definitely come back to this guide on how to use it. So this is what I did to get to level 39 fast. And it's quite straightforward. What I did was, I'm trying to see how many days it will take me to level 40 and how many refills I need to do to make this happen. So if I was doing three refills a day, it would take me around eight days to get to level 40. But if I did five refills a day, all of a sudden it takes me less than seven days to take me to level 40. And this is not including all the other experience I'll get in the game as I progress to level 36, level 37, and 38 for additional experience coming from the quest. So the Excel guide was helping me to determine how to reach a target goal by filling up how many resources with recharge of energy. Now, of course, it will cost more resource and also more polychromes to recharge this way. But this gave me a direct method to get to higher level fast to set my weekly target goal. And if I'm not in a rush, I can do zero refills a day and I get to see how long it will take me if I don't do any refills at level 35. And over here, you see, after doing that for a few days, and this is pretty much more than half of the week, I'm already level 39. And now I can slow down. So I show you guys what I'm doing now. I'm putting my current experience into the formula, and I can see it will take me 2.8 days if I don't refill. If I refill once, it will take me this long. If I refill three times, it will take me around two days to get to level 40. And those are my targets and also method of how to determine how to get to level 40 with the refills. Now, in order for you guys to use this Excel, come over to the links below of the video, click onto files and make a copy. If you do not make a copy of this file, you cannot change the numbers here. And the Excel was built so you guys can change numbers. Now, of course, there's also tons of other methods to get additional experience. And I recommend coming back to this video and going through the timestamps over here to all those methods. Those are really good. And I have discovered one of the best free-to-play methods shared to me by a lot of friends, especially Chinese players who got to level 40 super fast. And one of the secrets is actually coming over to the Hollows. You can see there's a lot of experience to be earned in the Hollows. And briefly reading all the Hollow leveling, and if you level every five levels, you get 600 experience. Overall, you get over 12,000 experience by playing the Hollow, by leveling up your license, and this doesn't require any energy. So a lot of players who actually power leveled was getting more experience than what we're getting just by leveling over here. And this is by playing Hollows without experience. And I guess I want to share this one with you guys in case you want to push for higher levels even faster. Now briefly summarizing all the ways to get additional bonus experience in the game. And now because we talk about this, we'll skim through this one quickly. As you clear the story content guys, you'll be getting additional experience on the first clear of the story content together with, uh, with side quests and also looting chests will give you additional experience. Character stories will unlock up to six different character stories. Three of them will be ready around level 32, and the next one will be around 34, 36, and also level 38 for all six of the character stories. 
and those character stories will give you around 400 character experience per section of the individual story. Sometimes there's three different stories and also different combat. You can be recharging energies to refill, and this will cost additional polychromes, or this will cost other battery. We get three other batteries on the battle pass around level 5, then two more on level 15, and also on 25. And this will give you additional energy to spend, and this will give you additional experience. We also get additional experience coming from the trial events or the premier events in the trials. So 100 per completion of those, and there's about 4,500 to get. And finally, what I just mentioned about the bonus experience coming from the Hollows, this is a big factor, over 12,000 bonus experience. If you're out of energy and if you're playing the hunt, you also get bonus experience by playing the hunt three times a week. And those can be really good without spending any energy. Now finally, there's also hidden quests and also chain events that is available in the game as you go through various clues in the game. And because we mentioned about this previously, let's briefly talk about this as well. So if you speak to the red and spawning bamboos, you get a hearing experience and also polychromes. And there's a number of methods to trigger those. And as you speak to NPCs, and also as you change in the time of the day, you'll start to find different hidden quests on those four different locations. And this will help you greatly to get some boost of experience. And as you can see here, I also have listed out a number of different hidden quests and also method to get more experience. So those are in the previous videos and this acts as a summary if you haven't seen those videos to as a reminder to get more experience in the game without spending money. So coming back over to our notes, what do I mean the progression pay war? As you play the game, around level 28, 29, you start to realize it's actually quite hard to get to level 30 right away. And then around 32, 33, and level 32, those levels, you start to realize it's hard to get to level 36. And then around level 36 to 39, you realize it's quite hard to get to level 40. So those are the paywalls in the game that is designed to have less content, less quest, less experience, and the story content is gated behind those thresholds. And by designing the game this way, the developers are trying to get the players to do more reviews and also spend more money in the game. So why I made this particular guide, I wasn't purposely making you guys to do more reviews, but rather to help you to determine a set goal so you don't over refill. Because if you start refilling, the cost of refill will go up, starts with 50 and then goes to 75, 100, even up to 200 polychromes per refill. Now I'd like to recommend some of my previous videos on the topic of how to get to level faster with all the methods that was mentioned in this video. And we do have a few previous videos on rolling for characters, how to get additional experience from the hidden quest and also chain quest. And this will help you as you stuck with a progression wall. And we do have the videos here that is available in the links below. So using those methods and also understanding how we can get additional free polychromes coming from this video and also other events you can participate, players should be able to understand how you can plan for the game without overspending in it, without you noticing it. The progression paywall is mainly focused on the experience of the players, and most players want to get to level 35 fast, want to get to level 40 fast, and level 45 fast. And my recommendation is to use a variety of the guides to see all the ways to get more experience, all the ways to get more hidden quests, and finally, using this Excel to plan the way like I did, to refill responsibly. I have never refilled more than five times a day, and most of the time I only do three times refill a day now, because I know even with three refills, I can get to level 40. My next goal is to get to level 45, which will take some time. Now, of course, if you're planning to go to level 50, level 55, or level 60, this will take over a month. So my next goal is just level 40, level 45, maybe level 50, but this will take even longer. Even if I did the maximum 8 refills, this will take over 2 weeks. So I'm not really rushing for those. And having those numbers available will teach you guys not having to rush for the progression because you know it's going to take super, super long. Now coming over to a second part of the video, I have also written some notes for those of you that have played or even haven't played gacha games to talk about the gacha paywall. The gacha paywall is designed intentionally by the developers, which is intelligently and also, I guess, psychologically designed to have you spend more money in the game. 
As you play the gadget system, I'm sure you know where it is. This is when you summon for characters, right? Notice I've actually saved a lot of free-to-play summons. And this will actually help me a lot. Yes, I did buy the Monty card. I'll show you guys over here. I have tried to play entirely free-to-play. And buying the Monty card does help, but I haven't spent any of the gems from the Monty card. So you can see all the top-up bonus over here, and I haven't really wailed, right? So how do you beat the gacha paywall is to understand and also to psychologically prepare for, you for a few things. The first thing is losing the 50-50. If you haven't seen this video, I recommend you briefly watching this to understand all the gacha tricks and also mechanics and what is the 50-50. So losing the 50-50 can be a very terrible thing for a lot of players. And there is a psychological factor called the gambler's fallency. This is when us as a gacha player, we think we're luckier than most people. And the moment we get unlucky, it is really painful and we want to remove the pain. And sometimes we'll actually spend more money to just remove the pain and get lucky or get even with our luck and get the items we missed out. And the thought idea is, oh my gosh, I'm so close to the next PT. I'm guaranteed to have the characters. I just want my weapon or my characters. I just want to select my characters I wanted. It is in our nature, guys, to want instant gratification and want to pay money to reduce the suffering and also pay money to not delay things. Now, this sounds pretty scary, right? And this is why people are saying gacha games are psychological predatory and they try to make you and also beat you psychologically so you can spend more money. So this is why I want to make this video, right, to help you guys to understand. So once we understand, we can start to beat the variety of paywalls in the game. How do you want to pay or how do you want to beat the paywall in terms of summoning and also the gacha mechanics is to plan ahead of time. Plan for multiple results that will help you to determine what's going to happen when something good happens. Well, when something good happens, you just enjoy the game, right? But when something not so good happens, like losing the 50-50 or even losing the 50-50 to a dupe, that is terrible, right? If you plan and also prepare yourself mentally ahead of the time, this will help you greatly to not overspend money. Now, it is also important again to remind you guys to understand the raids and also gacha mechanics. And preparing for around 76 or 100 summons for a soft pity or hard pity is actually quite important this way to prepare for the free to play summons. And this is why I have prepared a lot of my savings and also summons for the new banner. This way, I don't have to spend much. Even if I fail, I'll get really close to the character, knowing how much I've prepared over here, as you can see. So the final summary to beat the paywall with Gacha games is that knowledge is power. And once you mentally prepare yourselves, and then you go through our rerolling guide and variety of guide, and also avoid the chart banners, you'll be more prepared to not having to spend too much money in the Gacha games and still enjoy the game and get some better results over here. Now, on the topic of variety of paywalls, there's also the Pokemon effect. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of it. So this is when you want to collect all the Pokemon, so all the characters in the game, and you just feel like you're missing out on one or two of them. And all of a sudden, just by paying a little more will help you get there. And maybe you're thinking, I want all the strongest top meta units. Well, if you have played gacha games long enough like myself, I've played gacha games for over 10 years. This is a never-ending chase for the additional characters, and the game developers for any gadget game will always make the upcoming characters stronger than the current one. So this will get you to spend more money a few months later. So it's important, guys, to resist the Pokemon effect, but rather to enjoy the characters you have. And I'll be making focus videos on each of the characters, how you can combo play them to the best results, and enjoy each of the s rank characters, no matter which characters you've found. We have made a guide on Soldier 11, if you haven't seen it, and I'll be making a focus guide on each of those characters. Now, during this time, I do want to mention that it is okay to spend some money in the game if your financial situation and also needs is okay with spending money. And I'm not saying you shouldn't spend money at all for gadget games, and I do spend some money while I play gadget games to support the developers. Usually, I buy the monthly card and sort of battle pass because that is the best in value but we should never spend beyond our needs. To give you guys a personal example, when I first started to play gadget games, I played a game called Summoner's War. It is one of the fun and also well-designed games at the time, and the game's still ongoing. They still make a lot of money. When I played the game, in the first half month of playing, I spent four digits into the game. I spent half of my month's salary, 
and I was feeling terrible after spending over four digits. I have never spent that much in my life. And it was something that I really want to share with you guys. This is what made me want to play games or get your games more free to play. And this is why I keep making videos and guides like those to help you guys avoid getting baited, getting traps, and getting to the point that you start to feel so guilty about playing games like those because there's no limits how much you can spend in a gacha game. And what I also want to remind you guys is after spending so much money into my previous gacha games, I realized there's, there's no amount of spending that can bring me joy. And once I overspending a game, getting a new character, a new weapon no longer makes me feel lucky or feel better. And once we overspending a game, we tend to become less enjoyable or having a good time when we play a game that is supposed to be free to play, or I guess low spending. So here are some of my thoughts and also personal experience, which I want to share with you guys to help you beat the paywalls and also different effects with gacha games to spend less money in those games. Now I know it is a little sidetracked because the intention of making this video is to help you guys to get to level 40 and also level 45. But it is really important for me guys, in no matter which gacha game I play, I share those important lessons in life and also in gacha games to help you guys understand and also have a better time play any gacha game that's out there, avoiding those paywalls and also spending too much in it. Now, similar to all the videos, if you want to follow the notes, those will be available in the links below. And if you find my videos helpful and you want to see more future videos for the ZZZ and also other games to come, make sure you subscribe to the channel and keep the notification on for the latest content.